as it went along, he start, started seeing more and more horrible things happening. Yeah, there's this, there's this sort of mounting sense of claustrophobia, which, which um, I, I, I do not do anything to really conjure it, conjure it itself, but I found it very, you know, I, I was always a big fan of um, horror movies uh, when I was a kid, and one in particular that I loved was The Invasion of the Body Snatchers, the original Invasion of the Body Snatchers, you know, where a doctor comes back to uh, his, his, his hometown and finds everything changed in sort of small and, and somewhat confounding and ultimately terrifying ways. And there was a certain feel to this to this story, to Dodd's and Martha's story, uh, very much that kind of thing, where they arrive in this world with expectations of one thing, and gradually, and not so gradually, things change, um, change around them, with this very dark climax finally, finally changing them irrevocably. I like that horror movie effect. He's watched everything pretty quietly. And then he gets up and he tells them exactly what he thinks of them, their regime, and of, but, in, but not, he's not, but in a very professorial, kind of, he gives them a lecture in the purest sense. Yeah, I believe you're referring to his Columbus Day talk at the American Chamber of Commerce in Berlin, which was well attended by, by uh, uh, Nazis and, and, and lay folk and members of the Reich and no doubt the Gestapo. Um, Dodd that day, th it, 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 that's a very important moment because it, it, it spoke so much to what was happening at the time in terms of Dodd and his position in the State Department and his position in, in Berlin. Here he gave this talk. Um, he, he gave this talk, uh, an, an afternoon talk, in which he was completely oblique. He, he used only allusions to, to past regimes and in, in, in even as far back as ancient history to show um, in this kind of, in, the, in very much a lecture, to show how regimes that had become tyrannical and dictatorial had almost invariably failed. But he never made direct reference to Hitler, to Berlin, to, to Germany's, to the, to the Third Reich. The point was to have everybody in the audience sort of get the illusions. And yet, there would be nothing for them to point to per se in the speech to allow them to, 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 to cause, him, cause him problems. And yet, the speech, as innocuous as it seemed, caused huge problems for him um, with his own State Department and also with the regime um, in Germany. This was perceived as, in the, U in the US, as needlessly provocative. Um, and yet, today, reading the speech, you just, was, what was that all about? You know, how, how could you find this provocative? And it spoke to the sensitivity of the time, but it also spoke to Dodd following through on, on his mandate with Roosevelt. Roosevelt had told him he wanted to have a man in Berlin who would be a standing model of American liberal values. And Dodd took that seriously, and that's why when in his first, what was that, four months of being in Berlin, he chose to take on this speech which was viewed as being a very undiplomatic thing to do, very outside the realm of what a typical diplomat would do, and yet very much in the realm of what Roosevelt wanted him to do and to be. I was so proud of him. He just, <laughs> cause, cause it was oh. like, oh, is he actually, you know, he's, it's the, the, you know, the little guy who, you know, Mr. Smith goes to Washington, except it's Mr. Dodd goes to Berlin. Well, it's, it's very true. There was, there was a very sort of Mr. Smithish thing about that, and especially with that particular talk. But, but even, even, even more, I mean, the, you know, it, it, it's not exactly a heroic thing to do. I mean, it was, it was something he felt he had to do, but it doesn't rise to the level of something like Schindler or otherwise. But, you know, in other ways, he proved himself to be somewhat, somewhat heroic, or at least not willing to succumb to the charms, if you will, of, of, of the Nazi uh, higher-ups. And that was his refusal to go each year to, um, from the get-go, he decided he was not going to attend the big Nazi party rallies that took place in September each, each year. He did not want to go because he saw it strictly as a political party affair, um, not something that a diplomat from the United States would attend. It was not, in his view, a state function. Also, 
he did not want to be, he didn't want to fall into the trap of becoming fodder for, uh, for uh, Joseph Goebbels' um, propaganda machine. He didn't want to be photographed at the rally. He didn't want to be seen in the company of these fanatic you know, displays of, of armed force and so forth. And that, too, proved to be very provocative to the, the State Department. They felt that, uh, in the end, that he should attend these things. They left it at first up to him, but of course their, their true opinion, uh, obviously, as, as what later came to be proved, their, their true opinion was that he should have gone to these things. And he just felt very staunch and said, no, he, he, he should not. That was one of the hallmarks of his, of his ambassadorship, was to, to stand up for, for things he believed in, in as, 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 as indirect or direct a way as he could without making a big deal of it. You know, he was not going to attend these things because they were not state functions, they were party functions. The more you see, the uglier and scarier it gets. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it, it does. It is the Garden of the Bees, and it does get darker and darker and darker until the climactic um, event of the summer of 1934 when, when all things, um, to anybody who's paying attention, um, all things became clear. Uh, unfortunately, um, while Dodd was paying attention, while Martha was paying attention, and many others in Berlin were, um, too many outside failed to recognize the significance of that, that final, those final events of the summer of 1934. And that's the template. That's what laid down the, the pattern for what was to come five or six years later. The book is In the Garden of Beasts, Love, Terror, and an American Family in Hitler's Berlin. I've been speaking with the author Eric Larson and In the Garden of Beasts, published by Crown, distributed in Canada by Random House.